2016, how did you vote? I, I voted for Hillary Clinton. 2020? I wrote in Bernie Sanders' name. And 2024? I'm voting for Trump. Wow. Why? Gaza. Palestine. The genocide. That's it. We have to punish genocide. We cannot reward it with a second term. Conversations on a journey through Michigan. Voices that are surprising, revealing, contradictory, but voices which could help shape this American election. Who will Arab Americans vote for? And why does their vote matter so much to both candidates? First, the contradiction. Two weeks before the election, Republican candidate Donald Trump on yet another visit to Michigan, a must-win swing state. He's asked about the war in the Middle East. Well, look, he's doing a good job. Biden is trying to hold him back. Just so you understand, Biden is far superior to the, to the VP. Uh, he's trying to hold him back, and he probably should be doing the opposite, actually. I'm glad that VP decided to do what he had to do, but it's... That is, by every measure, full throttle support for Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu and his war in Gaza and Lebanon. So why, how did this happen an hour after Trump said that? Welcome to Michigan. And you know, we all ultimately want one thing. We want peace in the Middle East. We're going to get peace in the Middle East. We trust you. Let's begin with the simple question. Why Trump? It's a combination of two things, uh, disappointment and hope. Disappointment that the current ad uh, administration uh, and how they are handling things locally or internationally. And uh, hope that the new administration uh, led by, by Trump, if he wins the election, will do something different. To understand what's going on here, let's take a step back. In the United States, there are approximately 3.7 million Arab Americans. The majority have ancestral ties to Lebanon, Egypt, Syria, Yemen, Iraq, and the Palestinian territories. And the Arab American community is at its largest here in Michigan. Why? Cars. It was the birth of the motor industry which brought immigrants here decades ago. Detroit, just down the road, is the motor city, the city of Ford, Chrysler, General Motors. Now, Michigan is, these days, a crucial swing state, one of seven which will hold the key to who will take the White House. And look how close it is. Back in 2016, Trump was the first Republican to win Michigan since 1988. He defeated Hillary Clinton by fewer than 11,000 votes. Four years later, in 2020, Joe Biden won the state by only 154,000 votes out of more than 5.5 million cast. That's a margin of 2.8%. I was a Democrat up until five months ago. And then when I saw that there was no hope whatsoever that Biden and Harris would change their policies vis-a-vis -vis the supply of weapons to the Israel that was killing uh, large amounts of Palestinians. The Israelis do not fear the Democrats. The Israelis, especially Netanyahu, fears President Trump. You can see then that small shifts in voting positions can change everything here. And a big shift, even within a certain small demographic of voter, could have a big impact. We voted on committed on, on the primary election and there was uh, over 100,000 uncommitted vote in Michigan to send a message to the current administration that we are not happy about uh, what's going on in the Middle East and how they are handling the situation. We had some concerns and uh, some requests. None of them was uh, addressed. And so there was no reason for us to just uh, continue supporting. They just completely neglected our concerns. And um, so we had to look for the alternative. We have a hope that uh, uh, some change will happen if President Trump wins. That is a pretty stark assessment of the situation in Michigan from a Democratic Party leader. So what are the polls saying? 40% of Arab Americans say they will vote for Trump. That is a 5% increase from 2020, according to the Arab American Institute. 
Even though Michigan is a competitive state, it leans Democratic in presidential elections. But the latest poll shows that Arab Americans are now tied in who they identify as, both Republicans and Democrats, at around 38%. So why is that? A third party or independent candidate has never won a presidential election in the United States, so many Americans tend to vote for the candidate they least dislike, or sometimes they don't vote at all. In this case, many seem to be voting to, quote, punish the Democrats for Gaza. So, so your vote is an active um, protest vote, and, and, and to vote for Stein would be a passive protest vote? It would be a passive pro protest vote, and it would also, based on the numbers, not help Trump win. Um, it would not help defeat Harris. So for me, my vote is not only a protest vote, it is a mathematical st strategy. It is a way to ensure that Harris loses. Because you don't sound like a Republican. I am not a Republican. I don't think I will be. <laughs> I vote based on policy. And right now, the policy in Gaza is the, at the forefront. Everything, every other policy, every other issue is, is negligible. It's all about ending a genocide, holding somebody accountable for the deaths of 200,000 civilians. We, we are literally funding the burning alive of humans in front of us that are on video. We're funding children being mutilated. It's not like we stopped or had pause. We are actively funding it. There is no other issue to me of importance or of consequence, none. I came home the day I, I met Trump and I, I gave my son a MAGA hat and I said, I guess, I guess we're there. And he said, he said, ew. His first words to me were, ew. I said, but Baba, he said he's gonna stop the war. And he said, okay, that's it. Give me that hat. We're voting for Trump. And that's, that's the sentiment, not just of an eight-year-old, but of an entire community. If you're gonna stop the war, even if I don't like you, I'm, I'm on your team. It's not common for foreign policy to be at the forefront of an election campaign, but Israel's war in Gaza has undoubtedly shaped the views and the votes of many Arab Americans here. I'm an old guy, right? Uh, I, mean, I would tell you that uh, not since Vietnam have I seen a foreign policy issue have this dramatic an impact on an election? Uh, even the Iraq war, which did have an impact, um, did not produce the same, the same direct result, especially not just in terms of its impact on Arab Americans, but on its impact of the broader democratic constituency. Um, look at young voters. When we did a national poll of American voters uh, a few months back, young voters, uh, black, Latino, Asian voters, what, what one calls the Obama coalition, the, the progressive coalition of voters, two to one oppose Israel's policy. And two to one are upset with the failure of the administration to address it. I'd say about 10, 15% of those voters are at risk in, uh, in, in, for Democrats because of their feelings about Gaza. We are fighting for America's future. And we understand the opportunity we have before us to turn the page on the fear. I think, unfortunately, that some in the Harris campaign feel that they've given up. They just don't know how they can ever win that community back, especially now with, with Lebanon um, at risk. And a, a very large number of the uh, Michigan Arab American community are Lebanese. Uh, this is going to be a very different election than it could have been. Uh, and Gaza is largely the reason why. And I think that Right now, the advantage is Trump. And um, at, look, as a lifelong Democrat, that troubles me. I'm just looking at the numbers and telling you what they are. Since the war in Gaza began, Joe Biden has provided Israel with billions of dollars in military support, sparking anger here and beyond. Remember, Michigan helped deliver Biden his victory back in 2020. 
And this is a potential electoral weakness that Donald Trump hopes to exploit. He's using useful surrogates to help him, including his extended family. This is Masoud Boulos, a Lebanese-American businessman. His son is married to Donald Trump's daughter, Tiffany, and he spoke to Sky News. The energy that this, this great man has is just unparalleled, it's unbelievable. And he didn't have to do this. He's a billionaire, he could have been retired, he could have been in any, on any beach uh, now, enjoying his time with his uh, beautiful wife and beautiful family and beautiful grandkids and uh, just resting. But he's doing this for America, he's doing this for the world. It's easy then to see why voters might be drawn away from Biden and Harris. It is a protest for Gaza and Lebanon. But here's the puzzle. Why would they be drawn to a man, Donald Trump, whose policy on Gaza and Lebanon is not likely to be different from Biden's or Harris's? If anything, he could be more pro-Israel. Remember, too, that Donald Trump was the man who put in place the so-called Muslim ban during his last presidency. That phrase isn't entirely accurate. It was a travel ban for citizens from certain Muslim-majority countries over security fears. It was later overturned by the Supreme Court, but the sentiment that Trump was hardly pro-immigration and pro-Muslim, well, that resonated. Over time, though, things have changed. We as Muslims stand with President Trump because he promises peace. He promises peace, not war. I personally believe that God saved his life twice for a reason. One thing that the the Democrats keep sending to, to our communities to scare them that you will come and deport them, although some of them are second and third generation immigrants. So I want you to, to respond to these uh, accusations and, and uh, fear uh, delivering to our community. What would you say? Fake news. Fake news. It's about culture wars as well, about different values. People here are traditionally conservative Increasingly, many are uncomfortable with the leftward creep of the Democratic Party, education in schools, LGBTQ plus issues. They feel the policies of the Democrats no longer align with their own values. Trump's, though, well, they do. The, the Republican Party is a conservative party. Our communities are very conservative, more conservative than the Republican Party. Family and faith-oriented person. Remember when he talks about raising his kids, what does he say? He say... He taught them no drugs, no alcohol, no smoking. Is it, is it that? Yeah. We support Donald J. Trump for his commitment to promoting family values. A prevailing sentiment echoes here. The idea that no one can be worse than the Democrats on Israel, Gaza, and that domestically, on social issues and the economy, Trump would be better for this community. I guess what lots of people will struggle with is that they may understand that you feel abandoned by the Democrats, but, but to support a man, for you personally, for, to support a man who just the other day said that all Yemenis were terrorists, you are Yemeni. He did not say that. He said a lot of terrorists comes from Yemen. When he was talking about... Is that those... true? Yes, that's what... No, but is no, that no. true that lots of terrorists come no, from No, no, I don't agree with him on, on that, but th that's a statement he was talking about those illegal immigrants released from prisons by the current administration. And he said, among them, a lot of terrorists come from Yemen. I protested against that, and I sent him a personal message that I'm not happy about what I heard. He, he's always focusing his negative attention on immigrants, on the people that you represent in, the, in this community. Despite of what he keeps saying, I said in my endorsement that I don't agree on everything with him 100%. So there are some disagreements. Uh, this is a statement that was said about Damon is one of them. And I protested, and he listened to me, and he appreciated it. Even to the point where he said, now every time I speak, I have to think about what Mayor Gallup doesn't want to hear. So he knows uh, that, uh, you know, before he didn't listen, he didn't meet any Yemeni or any uh, person to explain to him the situation. Maybe he was misinformed about some stuff. Now he's coming to Hamtramck to show respect and appreciation to the Yemeni community. Do you worry that, that he's using you, that he knows he needs your votes because he knows he needs Michigan? And actually, he doesn't really care about you and your community. Well, uh, I can't guarantee anything. I, I, I told my community, too, that uh, I, I have no uh, uh, guarantees. Here's something worth considering. 
turnout. Traditionally, Arab American voters' turnout has been high, 80% or so. But this year, only 63% of the community say they are enthusiastic about voting in the presidential election. That will likely impact turnout in November. And from our conversations in the community, they are engaged. And crucially, it is about much more than just the war. A new president might be the answer to fix it. And that new president would be Trump? Possibly. I think we need like a quick fix right now, and I think Trump is the answer. But possibly, I'm not sure. <laughs> it won't take many to swing this state and streamline the path to the White House. Here, through all the contradictions, they are swinging to Trump.